share. I know I'm up right now, but I'm trying to make sure that I um, can change it from here if they let me edit video. Yeah, make it unlisted. Done. And here. There it is. I want to see what happens when they try that link. Everybody in here? <laughs> I got a delay. Hold on. Okay, I'm good now. <laughs> let me take my, let me take this off of here. All right. We good. Impulse Travels, thank you for that 100, baby. Okay, so let me get back in it. Is the remnant all up in here? Everybody in here? All right. Let me get back in it. The title is Give Not Thy Strength to Woman. Hold on. Hold on, guys. I got to make sure all my people is in here. I, I put it on uh I put it on a um I put it on a um unlisted and gave you guys a link. I don't know. But anyway, we're gonna roll, man. We'll fix it later, okay? I'll give you guys an extra on Saturday just for the remnant. Anyway, this is titled Give Not Thy Strength to Woman. Give not your strength to a woman. All right. And I'm part, let me just let me just go over what I was saying before. What I was saying before is that, listen, in today's time, that's all that we see going on, right? Because people really don't understand the fundamentals of manhood. So we see a lot of dudes doing the very opposite of what the scripture have said. And the reason I kind of like going to the scriptures is the scriptures is the foundation. People don't know when I was even in the game, 
It was some fundamentals that I used from the from the scriptures that allowed me to have success in every 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 area of my life. I'm just not looking though what what with the kind of indoctrinated mind that this country teaches us to have, right? So I'm able to get stuff out of here and apply it to my everyday life. So let me just go ahead and break these things down. All right. So on Proverbs 31 and three, let's go there real quick. It says, give not thy strength unto woman, nor thy ways to that which destroys kings. Don't give your strength to a woman. That's what it's saying. You know, because these holes have been known to break down kings. You feel me? If you know the story about King David, uh, when he seen Bathsheba, and maybe she wasn't, you know, no hoe, but how beautiful she was seduced King David and made him fall. So in the scripture, God tells, he says, listen, some of my greatest warriors have been slain by this female. So right now he's saying in Proverbs 31, 3, give not thy strength unto woman. So I was saying in my other class, I was saying, look, man, throughout biblical history, it has been the woman that have that have really crushed some of God's great powerful men throughout biblical history. So at one time I had a conversation with my pops and I was like, dad, man, uh, you know, don't you think that God would would raise up somebody out of this game that knows how to deal with women? Right. To finally offset the enemy, being able to use women to destroy some of God's greatest people. I think God would bring up somebody about this game because at least I know how to deal with them. Right. Certain things to me in the way that I was raised, in the way that I'm the way that I think there are certain things that affects the average man that doesn't affect me. I'm not looking at the woman the same way that the average man is looking at the woman. I'm not seduced by a woman the same way the average man is seduced by a woman. And that's because the game, the knowledge of the game have given me restraint. So when it says, give not thy strength to woman, I can break that thing down. What I want to ask you guys is, do you know what strength is? If, if God is telling us, don't give our strength to woman, to a woman, well, then we need to figure out, well, what is strength? Because people got their own ideas of what they think strength is, right? So since we want to know what strength is, let's go see what strength says. Let me tell you what strength says. It says one of the things is the quality or state, this is the dictionary, the quality or state of being physically strong. That's one of the things strength is. Another similar thing to what strength is, is intensity. Another thing is robustness. Another thing is fortitude. Fortitude. Resilience and backbone. Let's go look at what fortitude means. Fortitude means courage in pain. In adversity, fortitude in means courage in pain in adversity. Okay, let's go see what resilience means. Resilience means the capacity to withstand or to recover quickly from difficulties or toughness. All right. Let's go see what backbone means. Backbone means the series of vertebrae extending from one skull to the pelvis, the spine, having a backbone. So the Most High is saying, don't give your fortitude, your strength, and your backbone to a woman. Don't do it. Don't go give your courage to a woman, which is your ability to be courageous, whether you having some adversity or pain. And these are the very fundamentals that a woman is looking for in the man. Right? So God is saying, don't give to the woman what's supposed to be in you. 
in essence, right? He said fortitude is courage in pain and adversity. I've, I've talked about this before, about in today's time that people really don't have a perspective of what a man is, right? What their position, what that means, what are the, the qualities and the characteristics that one should have to be classified as a man, right? So this is what we're talking about. Don't give your strength unto woman, right? That means that if you see a broad out there, let me tell you from the, the game perspective, right? If I see a woman out there, right? And she's fine and she got the perfect body. One thing I know, I'm telling you from the game perspective, one thing I know is they got to have a lot of average males out there jockeying this broad. Everywhere she goes, she get all the attention. Everywhere she goes, guys is falling out before her. Oh, you so beautiful. Can I, can I do any, can I take you out to dinner? Can I give you some money? Can I do? Everywhere she goes. I'm cognitive of the fact that this female is getting that type of energy, right? I'm cognitive of that, right? And I know that in doing that, those average males is giving their strength unto her. They're giving their strength unto her. They're not realizing that the very thing they give into her is what she's looking for in him. Let me say that again. They don't realize the very thing they're giving up to her is what she's looking for in them. But when you in the game and you got the mind of the game, you recognize that. Right. So which is why I might say it's not a girl's beauty, but it's her duty. Right. Sounds like rhyming, huh? But there's some significance about that for me to be able to make a proclamation and in my mind, I'm thinking already when I'm looking at her, that it's not your beauty, it's your duty. So I'm saying that it doesn't matter to me how beautiful you are. There's enough strength and value that I see in myself that makes me require something out of you other than how good you look. And if I can muster that thought process up, I'm beginning to, to build value. Right. So now when I'm approaching her, if I approach her, I'll give you a perfect illustration. I had somebody ask me, you know, how, you know, how, they, how should they approach a woman? Right. And I was like, it depends on where you at. You know, what's the setting? What, what this, that and the other? I said, because when I was in the game, I was successful at being able to get a lot of females that were strippers. Right. Now, right now, it's different than what it was in my day, because right now is everybody's stripping. Right. So so it's just different, just a different M.O. So in my day, a lot of guys in the game wasn't successful at getting girls that are strippers. But I was. I was very successful. And one of the things that I would do and I'm and I'm and I'm talking and I'm and I'm, and I'm telling them one of the things that I would do. I wouldn't operate with desperation. All this that I'm talking about is making sure you don't give your strength to a woman, but I'm breaking it down, right? So that we can understand in real time what that means. And I'm giving you a situation that I actually went through in my life where I executed the game by not giving my strength unto a woman, right? So I would go to these strip clubs and I'm already knowing that the women in the strip clubs are prepared. They're prepared for guys coming to the strip club just to try to go sleep with them. That's in their mind. They know they're stripping. They might be in a new strip club. They know men are seeing them naked. And so they know that that's going to give a, 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 a male a certain kind of feeling, a sexual urge. If she see, he see a beautiful female and she's undressed. So they have already prepared themselves, you know, to look for that type of guy. Right. So they got their defense on, you know, they got their armor on because they know no matter what a guy says in that setting. Right. They feel like a guy is coming and that's only thing on their mind because they're seeing them, you know, in that as a stripper. You feel me?
So I'm cognitive of that fact. I'm knowing that this broad already is expecting somebody going to try to sleep with her, take her home or whatever, right? I'm cognitive of that. So what I did, if I seen somebody that I was interested in, I understood one thing that when you are operating out of desperation, it takes value away from you. How? Because you're giving your strength to a woman when you operate in desperation. When you act desperate for her, you are actually giving your strength to a woman. So that's what I wasn't going to do. Right. So I might see somebody that I'm interested in. I might not talk to no other girl in the whole club. And when I have an opportunity to talk to one female, I might say, hello, how you doing? Oh, how you doing? How you doing? Because, you know, they want to be nice because then they're trying to get some money. Right. And they might say, well, you know, um, do you want to dance? And I was like, no, 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 I don't want no dance. But I tell you what, I would like to talk to you. Right. Let's have a conversation. And I'm going to give you twenty dollars because I know this is your this is your work environment. Right. And I don't want to be disrespectful to what you do. Right. I don't want no dance, but I would love to have a little conversation with you for a song. Here's twenty dollars. Just sit down. Let's talk. Right. And then after that, I might just leave. I might just leave because I'm thinking about planting a seed. See, because I have so much value, because I haven't given my strength unto a woman, I don't operate with desperation. Because I'm already knowing desperation devalues the individual that's desperate. It devalues you, right? Because I already want to set myself aside from every guy in there that she's thinking is just after her to have sex with her. So I already... By putting the move down, by telling her, listen, I don't want the dance because I don't want her to think that I'm in there tricking, first of all. But at the same time, I don't want her to look at me as, that, as though I'm petty. Right. So I'm, I'm going to tell her, listen, let me just give you this twenty dollars because I know this is your work environment. And I think this twenty dollars is worth me having a conversation with you when I know you would dance for somebody else. Shake your ass and the titties off in their face. That's not what I'm asking for. I just want to be able to conversate with you, right? And I'm talking to her for the whole dance. And then after that, I shake her hand. I say, you know, thank you very much. You have a nice evening. And I'm going to leave, right? I might not come in there for another week, maybe two, right? And then because I'm already thinking, remember, I'm not operating in desperation. I don't need to try to go, go sleep with her and take her home. I'm trying to have a broad, right? I'm trying to have her. Right. And I want to build value because I know the broad's point of reference is the most of the guys that come into that environment that have a certain action. And that is turned on by her physical attraction and all that. And she has her defenses up against that type of mentality. So I need to give her a different point of reference. And I'm not expecting for her to have a different point of reference dealing with me. In a in a in a in a, you know, in a two, three hour time that I'm in the club, right? So if I'm really interested in her, I'm already playing for the long haul, right? It might take me maybe two months, right? But I'm interested in her and I'm going to plant the proper seeds because I want her to start viewing me different than people that come up in that, in that, in that environment. And the only way she going to view me different if I if I put some different things down, if I do some different things so that she don't lump me in with everybody else in here where her defenses will be way up like this. Right. Because if you go in there acting like everybody else act, the defenses is all the way up. And I'm not expecting for the defenses to come down in one evening. Right. But I'd want to let her know. Listen, I first I want to because I'm telling her what I'm doing. Because I'm planting seeds. I'm telling her what I'm doing. I don't want to dance, but I want to talk to you. Here's $20 or whatever they for the dance. I mean, for the for the conversation. Right. So automatically, there's something that's planted inside of her. Well, he's different than, than somebody else. He everybody else want me to shake my ass in their face and their titties in my face in their face. But this man says he don't want that, but he just want to talk to me. But he's telling me that he respects what I do and he's not just talking about it. He gave me the 20, $30 or whatever it is to have a conversation with you, with, 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 with her. 
right? So now I'm 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 trying to give her a different point of reference that I'm not like what you what you normally dealing with. And I, again, I'm not expecting her to understand that in a, a few hours or one song. So I'm going to leave, right? And when I come back, I'm not talking to nobody else in the club. I'm talking to her, right? And she sees me and she's going to smile because if she remembers me and she is going to remember me because if I did something different than what anybody else would do. So she's going to remember that, right? So when she sees me, she's not going to have that defense. It's not going to be this motherfucker's trying to have sex with me. Or he's trying to, you know, fuck me or whatever. Right. It's going to be that he was cool. Right. And then I'm going to plant, I'm going to plant the seed. I'm going to plant some more seeds. I'm going to follow up on that. What's up, such and so? How you doing? You good today? Yeah. You drinking anything today? You want a Coke or something? You know, I don't drink, but do you want a Coke or, you know, whatever, whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm just, you know, I'm just in here. Good time. And I just want to holler at you. You know, the routine. I don't want no dancing or anything, but you know, I respect what you do, you know, because I'm a hustler myself. So, you know, I couldn't be no hustler myself and not expect that you're a hustler. I respect hustlers. Right. And I appreciate you. Right. And I'm going to go through the whole routine. And it's not a routine because it's really who I am. Right. I don't want her to think I'm petty because I know some dudes in the game think that that act is an act of tricking. That's small thinking because they really not trying to have a bra. They think they're going to go in there and talk about they a pimp. And, and you know what I'm saying? Because they used to having nothing broads a lot of time. Or they used to having bra. They, they scared of having strong bras. I want a strong bra. I never wanted a weak catch. I wanted somebody who was strong. What I realized in the game is that the girls that, give me, that gave me the less resistant didn't last long. But the girls that gave me more resistant on the most part, right? The girls that gave me the most resistant lasted longer, right? The girls that made me have to overcome some things, right? Because that girl has gone through some things in her personal life. She experienced some pain. She's had some experiences and some relationships and has given her wisdom and knowledge on how she's going to protect and conduct herself. So I'm going to appreciate who she's grown and developed into, right? I'm going to appreciate that because I already know the kind of catch that's out there, right? And in order... For me to bring her up to the level that I feel that I'm on, there's some things that I have to demonstrate to the to this broad. You know, so I'm not going to be petty. So the average dude got that little ass mind. Man, you get a 20 broad, 20, nigga, 20 bucks. Nigga, I spit and spin that. But you don't understand how big the play was. I done told her, I respect what you do. Take this little ass, you know, the little 20 old bucks, man. That You might give it to somebody homeless on the street. But I'm investing something. This is all by strategy, by investment, because this is who I am, because I know what she's dealing with out there. I'm not I'm, I'm not going in there thinking, you know, not knowing the type of dudes that be out here that don't have the information that ain't putting this game down. I already know she ain't been around nobody like this. Right. And I, I want to continue to invest in the fact that she's having a different experience with me. And I know sometimes having that different experience is going to take some time until she feels comfortable enough. And I don't mind her discomfort because I know she's been dealing with a whole bunch of cats that ain't thorough. Right. So whatever it is that she needs to be able to feel comfortable, let her go through that process. And I'm not rushing. I'm not rushing because I don't need nothing that important. I'd rather her understand who I am as a person. That's what I really want her to know. I'm not talking about no game. I ain't talking about no slick stuff. I want her to know who I am as a man, right? Because if she likes me as a man, what I do is very minimal. Don't really matter as much because she liked me, right? So I want to be able to have an opportunity to show her who I am. Even in that setting, I'm going to show her who I am. Right. So a guy who's petty and got a little mind think that she, oh, man, she done got over with you on twenty dollars. Well, that's dumb. You just a little old cat and probably never going to have access at no broad, and especially no big old broads, because a lot of them broads making some big money. Right. And so the broad's going to be attracted by big moves. She's going to be attracted by that. Right. And so I'm going to put that down and reinforce that I'm not desperate, 
and I'm not just trying to fuck you, trying to take you home and have sex with you. I want you to know who I am. I want to take the time for you to get to know me. Because if she takes the time to get to know me, the value of who I am, she's going to be attracted to that at some point, right? Because I'm not desperate. Because I'm a gentleman, right? Because there ain't nothing petty about me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you are operating like right now, what's culturally acceptable right now is going to the strip clubs and making it rain and spending thousands of thousands of dollars. I have actually had some of one of the top strippers in the country and I was actually life coaching her. Right. And I was telling her, you know, how she could take and take it to the next level. Right. I've actually had girls who are professionals, you know what I'm saying, that I have life coached because they appreciated the way that I moved and they felt that my information could help them in what they were doing. And it can. And it did. Do you understand what I'm saying? So now. The scripture says, give not thy strength unto a woman. Let me tell you what, what the thing is today. Got a lot of cats out there making a whole bunch of money. Mr. O, thank you for that, that night, that 20 bucks. A lot of cats out here making a lot of money, right? A lot of rappers, they're having millions of dollars, right? The thing is right now is uh, I'll buy her a house. I'll buy her a car. And you know what? The bra gonna go mess with you too. On those terms, the bra gonna go mess with you, right? Because you just want to have sex with her, right? And and you gonna buy her a house, or you'll buy her a car, you'll you'll buy her a Birkin bag, you're gonna make her go on a shopping spree, you know, because you feel that's the thing to do. That's the thing to do. Because I'm having money and abroad, you know, she'll come mess with anybody that got some money that break you off for for you know for a nice house. You know, house might cost, you know, it depends on what area you at. You're on Texas, you're over there, you know, in certain parts of Florida, you know, you get a nice house of 500,000, right? And so the, the bride will go for that because you're going to take care of everything, though. You know what I'm saying? Some of you, some of them have babies by these bras. And the bras don't care nothing about that. They might think you're cute and all that. But but do you think that they're going to be with a person who broke? You know, the Nick Cannon situation, I think he said he spent three, four million dollars a year, uh, you know, taking care of them kids from all the women that he'd been with. You know, I'm just saying it's more attractive to a woman if she feels she can be taken care of. Right. That don't mean you got the broad. She might have a baby by you. That don't mean you got the broad. You know, that means the broad sees advantage being with you, right? Because you can make sure she's all right. You can make sure the baby that she has with you all is all right. A lot of these girls out there just want to have babies with these rappers, these millionaire rappers, so they can make sure they all right. They feeling like shit. I'd be out here having sex with these nothing niggas out here. Excuse my expression. These nothing cats out here and they ain't got a buffalo head penny. So if I'm going to have a baby by somebody, he going to be somebody that got some money. So I'm going to be well off and, 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 and my child's going to be well off. That's a trade off. Right. But you don't got the bra. The bra got you. And some of these cats don't understand. They don't care. I got the money. I don't care. You know, that's the life that they've chosen that they want to live. I don't care if she really likes me or not, or she can fake that she likes me or whatever. You know, I just want to have sex. Give not thy strength unto a woman. I just want to have sex. I just want to fuck the broad because she's fine. You know what I'm saying? Give not thy strength unto a woman. Give not thy ways to them who have destroyed kings. You understand what I'm saying? So when I made the statement earlier about I could see why the most high would allow me to go through the pimp game to give me the information and in really knowing how to deal with a female. Really understand the language of a woman, you know, because you see what they're having out there because they got money. 
I had that out there and I didn't have nowhere near the money they had. Right? But eight bras at one time and all of them dropped dead gorgeous. Right? And and not only were they dropped dead gorgeous, you guys have seen some of the pictures that I put up. Not only were, I had all nationalities, drop dead gorgeous, fine as hell. Right? Not only were they drop dead gorgeous, but I wasn't the one supplying the money for them in the beginning, right? In the game that I was in, they, I gave them the information on how to maneuver in life so that we can go get some money. You see the value there? You see the value? So there's something that I must have knew to be able to have operated the way that I've operated to have beautiful women. And let me tell you, I've said it before. It ain't about how cute a person is and all that shit don't mean nothing in this game. I know some dudes that ain't maybe what somebody might consider to be very handsome, but got fine holes and had fine holes and getting hundreds of hundreds of thousands because they got this game. They understand that they are not supposed to give their strength into a woman. They might not even know that the scripture, they might not even understand that that is a spiritual principle, but the game has taught them that. And like I said earlier, the scripture says, give not thy strength to woman, because what you're giving up is what she's looking for in a man. But you giving it up. So it's like when a woman I remember when I went to a club one time and I was talking to this girl, I was in Frisco, you know, and we, we was kicking it off and everything. And we have a great conversation. And then I told her because the club was about to end. And I said, I just want to let you know that, you know. Uh, the club is ended and stuff, and uh, there ain't going to be no me taking you home and having sex and all that. Ain't none of that going on. The broad looked at me in shock because the broad part was thinking in the back of her mind, man, I'm supposed to. That's my line. I'm supposed to say that. But it wasn't a line to me. I lived that life. I meant that. I wanted her to know that I'm not really this little, your little pussy and all that shit don't mean nothing to me. That little shit don't move me. You know? So now what this did in her mind, because she ain't never heard this before, and not only did she never hear it before, not only did she never hear it before, she never felt the conviction when a person said it. Do you understand? It was my conviction when I said it to her and she knew I was serious. But now she's thinking, the hell he going to tell me he, I'm, you know, uh, it ain't going to be no sex. Now she's trying to force a pussy on me. <laughs> this nigga going to have this pussy. I don't care what he talk about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The more I'm telling her, this is not what it's about. She's thinking in her mind because she already knowing how she done destroyed most of cats with her pussy. She knew what most dudes would do because she's gorgeous. She's fine. Her body's perfect and she's beautiful. She's already had the experience of what a guy would do for her because of her beauty all by itself. And here I'm telling her, um, I just want you to know we had a great conversation. You cool. I like you. But I don't want you to think that I'm going to take want to take you home. And there ain't going to be no sex and none of that kind of stuff. You know, I'm going to let you know. I got to get to know you and figure out what you about. I'm telling the broad, this is the broad looking at me like this nigga got his goddamn nerve. Yeah, I do got my nerve because I mean it. I want to get to know you and know what you're about, you know? See, in the game, see, when you're not in the game, you feel that you get stripes for how many women you sleep with, right? Oh, man, I fucked her. Man, I fucked her. I fucked her. And you tell all your partners and they looking at you. Oh, man, man, boy, he done fucked all these broads. And, and so you feel real powerful based upon how many girls you enslaved. In this game, it's not so, right? See, in the game, I'm like, if a broad, if a broad, right, is going to be talking about, a broad is not going to be able just to say that she done had me. I feel so much about who I am as a man that I'm just, just the average little whatever broad is not going to be able to talk about how she done been with me. That ain't going to happen, man. It ain't going to happen. The broad, it ain't going to happen, man. I'm not, I'm just, this ain't going to happen. 
LeBron talking about, oh, yeah, I was with Drake. Bitch, no, you wasn't with me. Right? Because if LeBron is with me, man, right, uh, there's something that done transpired that she has done, right, for me in order for her to say that we've been together intimately like that. Right. Because I just feel so much about myself that I'm just not going to lend myself to anybody like that because they cute or because she got a nice body. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm just not about to lend myself over to the broad because she got a nice body. I don't give a damn. Do you understand? So now when you because I'm raised like that. So now when you raise like that. And you growing up like that, you continue to develop that kind of mentality. You continue to develop that kind of mentality, right? And you grow within that mentality. And that becomes something very appealing to a female. It's some appealing because it's something about that ability to have self-control. It's something about, you know, it's kind of almost like women being attracted to men that are married. Being attracted to something that they can't have or they're supposed to not be able to have it. Do you know what I'm saying? Being attracted to that. You guys out here getting this free game, go and kick in, man. Make sure you understand. Take care of your boy. You know what I'm saying? Because this wasn't supposed to be happening. Let me just say this. I put the, this. This was one of my classes on my OnlyFans page. And the reason why I'm transferring my OnlyFans over to my YouTube uh, uh, member page is because the OnlyFans platform keep crashing. It's been doing that to us for about a month and a half, right? So we're transferring everything over to the YouTube from my OnlyFans page. So you guys are getting blessed tonight, but make sure you show your appreciation because them brothers and sisters over there, my OnlyFans, they pay a, a, a subscription fee for that. That's why I appreciate anybody that gets on here that understands the value of the information and, and want to contribute to this game. You know what I'm saying? So they just told me uh, this is not because I tried to make I just I need to say this to you guys. I tried to make this, you know, uh, where where you, you only can get here through a link. Right. But then they said, just forget it, man, because it was crashing over there. And they said, let's just go, Dre. Right. So they blessing you guys tonight because this conversation wouldn't you guys wouldn't have got this game. You guys are getting this game and make sure you appreciate it. Right. Yeah, I'm just telling you, just like I don't be in desperation for no broad, you know, this is why I have uh, 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 classes that, 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 that require fees, right? Because I'm not in a number. I'm into those that appreciate the information and value it enough to say, man, I'll pay that little ass fee, whatever it is, because this thing that Dre is, is giving us, this education that Dre has given us is valuable and is worth it, right? So just I just want to let you guys know that this is, I wouldn't have did that. But them brothers over there said, let's just go. And this is what this is. Right. So we've given you this game, something that you would not see unless you are a member of uh, any of those platforms. All right. So blessings. So anyway, let me get because I'm going to give it to you thorough. Right. You get you getting this blessing. I'm not holding back one bit. I want you to understand some of the things that you get in these classes. We talk about everything, politics, women, relationships, this game, everything, everything. This is what we be teaching because I want to teach my people how to be empowered. All right. And, and, and try to check you out there. That's been giving your strength to a woman and let you know that the fundamentals of the, that the scriptures say, give not thy strength unto woman because you ain't creating strong men. You creating little males and little boys. Adrian C. I appreciate that love. So anyway. So anyway, look, man. So so. Uh, a broad begins to be attracted to that because she feels like it's something she can't have and it becomes valuable. Like I said, that's why a lot of girls be attracted to married men, right? Because it's something that's not attainable, right? So I'm telling her that there are certain things about me that's not attainable. Just because you cute doesn't mean you have access to certain things because I don't put the certain type of value on those things that the average dude does or that you do. Because I understand what you've been able to do with your sexy ass, with your body and how pretty you are. I get that. But I don't have beautiful, fine women all my life. That is not an exotic thing to me. That is nothing rare to me. Right. So you ain't going to move me with that shit. That's going to have to be something about you 
beyond how beautiful you are. Because you could be a beautiful dummy and then you're going to turn me off. Right? You might not be a person that can sit and have a have a conver have an intelligent conversation and that's going to turn me off. Yeah, you fine and all that, bro, but I need to be able to have somebody that I can holler at, that I can talk to about different subjects uh, and shit. You know? I'm a renaissance man. I love many different type of things. I love art. Do you understand? I love great thinkers and great writers. I used to sit back and me and my dad used to talk about, I mean, just uh, this particular writer and what he said and what it meant and go back and forth and, you know, talk about things like that. I want to be able to sit and have a conversation with a broad that's around me like that. I want the broad to be able to feel like, man, yeah, man. This is why I would always say that people used to always say that, you know, a guy in the game will not me always, you know, is trying to is trying to uh, pull from the bottom. I'm not trying to pull from the bottom. As a matter of fact, the more intelligent a female is, the more in danger she is dealing, you know, with a person like I was, right? If she was an ignorant woman, the ignorance could keep her, right, from being bowled over by who I am. But if she was brilliant and she was intelligent and I begin to have an intelligent conversation with her, that's going to be an attraction, you know, to her. She's a sap sapiosexual where she's attracted to knowledge and, and that type of thing. This is why in my dad's time and before that, guys in the game were Renaissance men, which I mean, they were very well read. Right. They were very well read. They were intelligent. They were brilliant. Right. And then after that drugs came in in the 80s, it kind of, you know, a lot of the game wouldn't really pass down to to the newer generation because a lot of those older players had got caught up in drugs and stuff. Right. And so the mastery, the beauty of this game wouldn't pass down. A lot was lost. It wasn't lost with me because I had a father that was able to deliver to me the information, which is the way reason why I'm the way that I am. Right. But see, a lot of guys in the game right now, they be it's like they're not as brilliant as they were in my dad's time. Right. They're not excited about going to read great writers and great thinkers and be able to have conversations like that. Th it's not like that. Right. It's really, you know, people used to talk about how it's really the game today has been ghettoized. Right. It's not about class and sophistication It's like. It's like, you know, it's not about, you know, uh, I don't, I don't want to say it like that, but I got to be honest. It's like it's now more it's grimy now. Right. Because what, what has happened is that hip hop and, and 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 gang members and, you know, all that has influenced so much that that has been influenced. The, the game has been influenced by those characteristics, the tough guy. And, you know, he got a pistol and, you know, he grimy. The game was never that it was about class. It was about sophistication, right? It was about holding an intelligent conversation and being able to speak appropriately. Do you understand? Mastering the, the King's language, right? Being well read. And it gave you access to a certain type of female, right? So a lot of the type of females that I had access to, a lot of guys in the game probably wouldn't have had the same kind of access because of who I was and how I presented myself. Then when I was in the streets, it wasn't like, oh, oh, he's a pimp. They would they couldn't uh, they couldn't see that I was no pimp. I, I didn't look like they think a pimp look. I didn't act like they thought a pimp acted. I was none of that. Right. But that's how the game was supposed to be. You, you wouldn't supposed to be out there. You know, I know back in exploitation times in the 70s films and all that, that there was this idea of a pimp with a big hat. And, and you know, uh, yeah, what's that movie? I'm going to get you, sucker. He had fish in his shoes and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, there was some of that kind of stuff going on. Right. But the premier guys in the game. Right. So let me explain it like this. It's like any sales force. I've said this before. Right. There could be a there could be a 200 people that on a sales force. There's only 10 percent of that 200 that's getting the majority of the money. And then everybody else is mediocre. And then it's the people are there not getting any money. But that's just like in the game. 
out of all the people who said they were in a game, like 10% have understood, have got the game passed down appropriately. And that 10% are the ones that are really getting money worth you being in the game. And there's a lot of guys that really never reach certain levels, right? Because there's no self-education. There is no encouragement, no desire for that self-education like it was when I grew up, right? You didn't want to be well well read, right? So right now I could, and some people might say Dre's mannerisms are feminine or, or, or whatever. No, I'm, I'm, my matter is a man that is well read and well uh, 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 well rounded. Uh, I'm sophisticated. Do you know what I'm saying? Of course, I don't want to say that about myself, but I need to explain to you, right? And I've always had access to a certain type of female because of how I moved, right? Because they couldn't see the ghetto in me. That's this is the reason why I was so successful with police accountability, because as much as they knew where I came from, as much as they was trying to see a pimp, they could never see him. Because when I sat down and had an intelligent conversation, they could not see what they seen in the media. Of This is what's supposed to be a pimp. They were they were trying to see that and they couldn't see that. They saw an intelligent man. Right. A, a man that's a thinker. Right. So I'm just trying to lay some foundations down to you. So when I was growing up, I desired what my dad portrayed. I wanted to be brilliant. My dad was brilliant. He could quote Shakespeare. So I start reading Shakespeare and read James Allen as a man thinketh and Herman Hesse and, and uh, Eric Byrne and all these writers. I, I wanted to be like my dad. And, and, the, and, and he was so sophisticated. And it was that that I desired. I didn't desire to be, you know, walking in the ghetto sagging or nothing like that. No shade, but that just wouldn't, what I felt that man, my dad had a house in the Hollywood Hills. You know, he, he drove a Mercedes when they wouldn't even drive, drive in Mercedes. They was driving Cadillacs and stuff, you know. I mean, way back then in the 70s, you know, in a house in Hollywood Hills, you know. And, and, and so that, because of what I seen, is what impressed me. I wasn't impressed by what was going on in the ghetto, even though I came from the streets. That didn't impress me. I wanted to be intelligent. I wanted to be brilliant. I wanted to be well-read. I wanted to be sophisticated. I wanted to know how to dress, how to present myself. That's what I desire, right? So now... Just think about all that, and then I'm going to a strip club. I just want to lay that down, right? Think about all that that I've expressed to you. Now I'm going to a strip club, and I'm un I'm already understanding what this female was dealing with, and I'm knowing that it's very rare that she probably come into a contact with an individual like like me. I'm already knowing I'm the gift too, right? Because if it happens to be that I catch her and she wants to be with me. I'm going to elevate her life intellectually, mentally, emotionally. I'm about to elevate her life. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm already, before I even go in there, I know I'm the catch. This is why when I, when I, when I told you I was talking to the girl in the club, talking about there ain't going to be no sex and none of that when we leave the club, right? Because I'm already knowing I'm the catch. I'm already knowing what I have to offer. And I know she don't know. I know she probably never been in the presence of an individual like me. I'm already knowing that. And I also know what she's dealt with out there. I'm going to be refreshing to every sense that she has. All of her five senses is going to be refreshing. I'm going to be that to her. Do you know what I'm saying? So this is what when the Most High is saying, give not thy strength to a woman. I'm trying to show you how males do that all the time because ain't they even had no father like I had to express to them, to build value in who they are. So they give away their strength all the time because their lack of understanding what value is because they attribute value to money. They attribute being valuable to having some money. That's why you see a lot of these rappers out there and these ball players out there, no shade, but this is the truth, with a lot of kids, with all these women, pretty women and stuff, right? 
because they attribute their value to money. And so does the broad. So the broad says he could look, he could be an ugly duckling, a ugly duckling, but he's a millionaire. All right. So I'm going to be calculating and I'm going to say, shoot, if I think about it, I can probably get about twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a month or more. If I sit there and have a baby by him and if I marry him, it's on and cracking. All right. So, so all these dudes out there is feeling empowered because, but now they begin war out because now these broads is coming after him saying, yeah, you're going to pay partner. Yeah. You're going to pay because that's what it was about initially. Right. But they like to feel like that wasn't what it was. They like me because I'm cute or because I'm talented and this, that, and the other. Well, okay. Would the bride have messed with you before you had your millions of dollars? If you wasn't uh, who you became? Would the broad have messed with you before you became this famous rapper? That should tell you who you really are and who you really not. You know? So what do you say, Andre? I'm saying this game, this knowledge that I share is able to give you the value that them guys think they have because of money. I've lived it. Right? So this game is able to give you that value to make you feel that powerful about yourself. And if you take the time and not be desperate and not be rushing and allow that female or that broad to see those qualities in you, because sometimes it takes a little bit, right? She's going to see that value. She's going to see that quality in you. Do you understand what I'm saying? She's going to see it. Hey, man, this game does wonders. It does wonders, you know, because it feels real mighty good to me, man, knowing that why a woman is with me. And I think about Dove, man. When I met her, uh, I had lost. The police had took everything, man. I met her. I, 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 I had went to San Diego in 98. Um, I bailed out of jail. The police came into my home, took all the furniture, all my shit up out of there. And I was like, I got to go get me some money. And it just so happened that the Super Bowl, Denver was playing um, um, Green Bay down in San Diego in 98. And the Super Bowl was down there. And I was like, man, I got to go get me some money, man. You know, got to go get me some money. And they had took everything from me, you know. So when Dove met me, I didn't have no whole bunch of money. It wasn't no bling and whatever, all this shit that made me move her. I wasn't, that wasn't what made me confident in the first place because I come from nothing with this game and materialized everything with this game, you know? So the confidence of knowing that this game, I can continue to duplicate and duplicate and duplicate this over and over again. I remember when the police was coming into my house and they was taking all my furniture, tagging it and taking it. You know, they was all laughing at me and I started laughing harder than them. And they looked at me like, what is this what you laughing at? And I said, <laughs> I said, you think that violence or anything got all this shit? I spit on the ground on my rug in my house. I said, I said violence didn't get this shit. Luck didn't get this shit. I said, this mind got this shit. I said, and this mind can continue to produce this over and over again. And I started laughing some more because they were laughing at first, right? Because they were thinking they were doing something to me by those little things that the average male out there has value in. But I had value in this information and I had value in this game, right? Because I could duplicate Right. I could come from nothing. And when I got out of prison, I didn't have anything, but I had everything because I had this game. And no matter what they thought they took. Right. They didn't take this from me. The brilliance that I had, the ability to duplicate over and over and over again. That's what makes you powerful. They could take away your money. You can see some of these rappers that get in trouble and they just strip them of everything. All right. 
but they can't take this game from me. So it ain't never been no money. So when I begin to have an experience and I'm meeting a female, I begin to express to her these things that I'm talking to you about. And think about me having a conversation with a female like I'm talking to you guys right now, right? Think about how that's impacting her because she really ain't never heard nothing like that before. She probably done been in the presence of, a, of a, some dudes that got some money and stuff and, and, and that's what their power source is, that money. Or their celebrity, because people use celebrity, they use money, they use all that as a vehicle of value, right? But here I am with the game as the vehicle of value. And so you can imagine how empowered I feel versus me only getting validation and power because I'm a good football player, basketball player, rapper, and all that. Not to say that, that, that that's not significant. It's good that somebody out there, they, they practice, they become a good basketball player, football player, or they become a good rapper and all that's good. But that don't mean they got no game. So they use their celebrity as leverage. Do you understand? That's how they move. They use their celebrity as leverage. I use this game as leverage. And that celebrity can only just go so far. They could do a lot, but that celebrity couldn't help them beat the law law enforcement right they got a whole bunch of people out there with a whole bunch of money but they ain't got the brilliance and the genius to go up against the system and beat them but this game did they don't got the brilliance of the genius to go up against this system and wear them out but this game does this game so people say man Somebody is great in a game. There's a many people that have been phenomenal in this game. Great men. My father was one of them. Uh, Joe Langford, Joe Cato. I mean, I can go down the line of some people that have done some amazing things in this game. Right. But I think I'm honest. I think that I'm honest and not that I'm trying to, you know, stroke myself or nothing, but just just the real facts. There's nobody that's elevated the game to a point where my work have reached the presidency, where my work actually changed laws, right? Where my work actually helped leads this state in police accountability, where the president called me, where I got online, and, I mean, where I got on Fox News and 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 the New Yorker came and interviewed, interviewed me and the governor came for my counsel and all this other stuff. And they made me the first official street czar in this nation and yada, yada, yada. That's the game that did that. And nobody has been able to achieve that. Somebody has some money and, you know, might have had this, that, and the other. But it's never been the money to me. It's always been the knowledge, the information. That's what they can't be beat. When I used to go to these universities and lecture and stuff, can you imagine people thinking me coming up out of my mama's womb uh, uh, from a pimp and a prostitute and elevate where I'm actually teaching at universities? And people, it, it, because I, I always used to say there's, a, there's some people that have some of the information that I have. But to be able to articulate that information is another level. My articulation skills is what a lot cannot do. They might have some of the information. Uh, have you ever had some information but can't really explain how you feel? You know, or it takes a certain type of articulation to be able to express exactly what you're feeling. Well, I'm able to articulate something, right? So I could be in a classroom, a criminal justice classroom, and give lectures there because I know how to articulate what I've experienced. I'm able to articulate the game. I'm, I'm able to articulate the mindset. I'm able to explain that the black community is a subculture and the game, the pimp game is a subculture within that. Like the mafia, I've said this before, where there's rules, there's regulations, there's guidelines, right? It That's a subculture. I'm able to explain that on the level with an intellectual where he can grasp it. And I'm also able to explain it on the level to somebody in the streets. And I'm also able to explain it on the level with somebody in the church. Because that's what being a Renaissance man is all about. Right. Being well informed. 
about many different things, which makes me very hard to deal with. So what do you think a female can deal with? when I, when? How can she deal with that? Right? How, what is she? So, so, so she's been with somebody that had a million dollars. So say she's been with somebody who had a million dollars. Say it's a female that's been with somebody that's like Drake or Diddy or one of these big people that got a billion dollars or Jay-Z or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Some of you might think, well, what, what can you offer her? I'm going to say, I think it's a wonderful thing that them brothers coming from where they came from, you know, was able to achieve and get to a financial position in the place that they've gotten to. You know, I don't got nothing bad to say about them brothers, only good to say about me. You know, and 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 it's not about trying to compare, you know, whatever substance of money that I have. See, because I'm not trying to win her over about how much money I got. But I can tell her, you know, um, it's something about the commodity of knowledge. It's something about that. The investments of knowledge because they print money, you know. It's something about knowledge because knowledge is power. And white supremacy didn't happen just with violence. I've said this a million times, but with brilliance, right? And I said, do you know that every country is vested in great thinkers? This is what I would tell her who's been with one of those guys, since you might think that that's what she's looking at, right? Because she's been with one of them guys. And I would say, do you know that every country is vested in getting the greatest thinkers? Because whoever has the greatest thinkers controls the future. Not the most money because they can print money, but the greatest thinkers. I'm a great thinker. I can contribute to whatever country that I was a part of. They used to say, man, they're going to try to kill you up there, Dre. I said, no, they won't. They are really, really taken back by how I'm able to comprehend and think and reason the way that I do when I wasn't educated through their school system because they feel that they own all the information. So they're baffled by the fact that I'm able to maneuver, think, outthink this system. And they're wondering where the hell did he get this from? How did he even think like this, right? So I'm a benefit to this country because I was the one that been able, was able to bring every community together to bring forth police accountability. That's my work. Of course, there's a lot of organizations that helped me. I'm not saying I didn't have any help. I had a gang of help from a bunch of organizations here. The natives up here, uh, LGBT communities, uh, just a whole bunch of people helped. But I spearheaded it. I was the one that went out there first and start fighting first. I was the one that went to every single community and talked to the leadership and brought all that together. It was my genius and my brilliance that was able to bring all those people together. You know what I'm saying? So I say, yeah, somebody might have a billion dollars. All right. But I have a mind that's so valuable that there is no amount of money that can gauge it. And I can prove it because there's been people with a lot of money for many years that have never been able to do what I've done. And I did that with genius. I didn't have a billion dollars to do it. I didn't have nowhere near that amount of money to do it. I did it with black genius. All right. So true enough, somebody might have a billion dollars. Right. But I own the future. Can you imagine, you know, having a conversation like that with a female? I own the future. God damn. It, could there be a, a value in that? I own the future. All right. I own the future. This is powerful stuff, man. Uh, let me see, man, because we already an hour in. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna answer a couple of questions. David Lawler says, let me put it up, guys. Show it. He says, Dre, I'm with you. What would you say about particular women putting up stronger resistance against powerful, potent men? I mean, men with power and knowledge, they give more resistance than weak men. I don't agree with you, David. I don't agree with that. You know, I've never had any problems. Right. But you could be saying somebody that is overbearing and not poised and not seasoned and don't understand the language of a woman, that could be an offense. Right. So the game, the knowledge of the game has taught me the language of the woman. Right. So there's a lot of people that might, you know, have 
somebody, so you said, what would you say about a particular woman putting up a stronger resistance against a powerful, potent man? It depends on what energy he's given off. You know? So, so you know, in the ghetto, uh, uh, you know, what is promoted is being this tough guy. You know, he's tough, he's down, he's strong, he's a killer, he's hard. That's promoted in our communities. But I am none of that thing. I've never wanted to be any of those things. I wanted to be sophisticated. I wanted to have class. I wanted to have intensity. I wanted to be passionate. You know, I wanted to be romantic. And all the things that they think is weak or soft and anything was the things that I promoted. So if I'm approaching a woman, I have those things a part of my personality. So I'm not giving off any energy other than I'm very, very pleasant. All right. And I know her. I'm taking the time. I have taken the time in my life to learn a woman, to learn her. Somebody says, you know, how? Because just think about me having eight women at one time for years versus another guy having one woman. Thank you for that uh, 50 bucks, fam, param. Uh, thinking about, you know, me having eight women at one time, right? And then another guy has one woman for several years, right? So there's a deduction of where the information comes in. If I've had experiences and I'm looking at all these eight women and they might be from different nationalities or something, and then I'm having a conversation while I'm, I'm, while I'm counseling somebody or mentoring somebody and they're asking me a question, well, I might say, well, if she's doing this, you should do that, right? And I might tell him because things break down to mathematical percentages, Say, so what do you mean, Dre? Well, I've had eight women at one time. And what I've seen when this occurs, probably 90% of them have done this. So I'm giving you a mathematical percentage just based upon the experiences that I've had. Well, one guy having one experience with one female, he's only he's not going to have as much intel to be able to see the way that I'm going to be able to see, right? So it becomes a mathematical percentage. So when I'm talking to somebody, I've had so many experiences with so many different type of females that have had certain things happen. And most of them has done certain things. And I'm able to say, well, based upon these experience, I could say she's going to do this, this and this. Do you, you understand how that works? So in my experiences, what you're saying here, I've never had that issue before. Right. So it really depends on what energy he is given off to said female where she is going to be having some resistance against him against him depends on the energy you give off right but i make things extremely pleasant right because first of all i'm not operating in desperation i am not giving my power unto her i'm holding and maintaining a sense of value about myself because of my lack of desperation okay Okay, let me see what else we, we got here. Uh, let me see. Okay, she has a ratchet disposition. Uh, let's see. Adrian says, let me put it up here. Adrian says, okay, she has a ratchet disposition, but gets girly and cooperative around you. Would you still pursue? Yes. Let me just say this to you. The key is that I never expect a female to come ready-made. Never. I never expect a female to come ready-made equivalent to the amount of experience and knowledge and things that I've gone through. I never expect that. I'm always expecting I got to go to work. It's a joy for me to go to work. Right now, sometimes the work might not be as intense as other times because there are certain things that a female could bring. Right. That gives her a little bit more advantage as far as her ability to understand or comprehend more than the average person. So say you have uh, a female that comes up out of a certain environment where you said she's ratchet. Right. And you have another female that have been gone to school and she's been educated and stuff like that. It might be easier for me to have a certain type of conversation and for her to grasp it. It doesn't mean that because a girl comes out of a the ghetto or something that she can't comprehend because I know a lot of sharp women, sharper than women that went to colleges, right? It just depends on her ability to comprehend, right? And because I'm never expecting for the female to come ready-made, I'm not in a position of rejection because I'm already deciding whether I want to mess with her or not. 
I'm already seeing there's something about you that I like, right? And when I make the decision to like you, I'm all I'm also making the decision to wait for you to understand, to grow, right? Regardless of whatever situation you come out of, because I already feel I got the information that can change your mind and your environment and everything. I have that information. I'm extremely confident with the information that I have. Right. So there's not a situation that makes me feel, oh, you you too far gone. I never feel that way because I never feel I never feel like anybody's coming ready made. I hope you understand that. All right. Let me answer a couple more questions. Thank you, Adrian, for that five family. Timothy Oliver, let's see here. What is your view on men physically hitting women in the game, Dre? That's not something that I did. Now, I'm not going to say that I never slapped nobody before. I'm not going to say that. And let me tell you, uh, let me break that down to you. I never drink and smoke in my life, right? That wasn't something that I did as something, you know, uh, uh, that was a part of who I was, right? And people in the game know that if you were with me, you couldn't drink and smoke, right? And, I, you know, I got deep before, but I probably would have been way more deeper if, if I allowed girls to drink and smoke around me, but that was something that I did not allow, right? People might have think he's extremely strict because I didn't allow it. There was one time, because I seen what, what happened in my family, I seen how drugs had hurt my father, hurt my aunt, hurt so many people in my family, and just that became an enemy to me. You know, I seen it destroy people that I loved so much, and it was something that I, that I hated with a passion, you know? Because I had to be in them 80s and see when that drug trade came in and what it did to my family. So many people in my family, in the community. It was something that I despised, right? So if you was with me, you couldn't do any of that. So one time, uh, I found out that a girl did it and I slapped her. I just, it was just a reaction. You know what I'm saying? It was a reaction. It was all that. It was all the people be, you know, that I cared for. It was, it, you know, and I slapped her, you know? I said, I told you, don't do that. You just destroy your life. And, you know, and it just was a reaction. But it was nothing that I, you know, invested in. You know, in, in the game, we used to say it's a no contact sport. The moment you start using your hand, you done ran out of pimping. All right. I know some guys that are very abusive that were in the game. That just was never me. You know, I remember one time, this is a real conversation. It really happened. I've said this before. You guys probably heard me say this before that, um, I would, you know, I had a house in Forest Hill, you know, it was, you know, mansion. It was in San Francisco in Forest Hill, um, looking over the city. It was beautiful. It was beautiful, you know, Versace furniture when people wouldn't even wear Versace, right? But it was beautiful, right? Dudes used to come up just to see the house because it was really phenomenal that a person in the game could achieve what I had achieved. It was a, a really wonderful sight to see. But I had this, this dining table was marble and I would give you know, all my girls, we would sit down and I would have meetings. We would have meetings and stuff. Right. And I remember one time we was having this meeting and my, and my, um, one of my girls was telling me about a situation and just telling you how I dealt with certain things. Right. And I, and I said to her, let me tell you something, you know, uh, uh, I'm gonna just tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in character, right. Of, of how I addressed her, uh, bitch, let me explain something to you. We over here playing for millions of dollars over here. And here you are with a $5, a $5 fucking problem. I said, let me tell you something, bitch. This is what I said to her. I said, there's a whole bunch of little niggas out there that are, will accommodate you with that small ass shit that you bring into the table. They out there, go fuck with them, you know? And sometimes girls would want to, I said that, right? But then some guy, girls would do some things to try to make you want to hit them, Right? Want to do something on purpose. The girls are like that. Some girls are like that, right? So I told the girl, I said, let me explain, let me explain to another girl. I said, let me tell you something, bitch. I don't get paid. I'm not no motherfucking boxer. I'm a pimp. Bitch, I don't get paid to box. I get paid to pimp. You know, you want a boxer, go fuck with Mike Tyson and one of them niggas. We pimping around here. That's how we deal with it. <laughs> you know, just to let them know, you know, I'm not with that shit. You know, you want to wrestle and tussle in the mud with a motherfucker, then go find a nigga that's like that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yoga, 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 watching from Thailand. What's up with it, family? Yes, sir. But that was the truth. That's how I did it, Timothy. That's true. Real spill. 
Yes, sir. Okay, I'm gonna answer a couple more questions, fam. A couple more questions with you guys. Thank all the people that uh you know send in, you know, with the um the super chat. You know, I appreciate you guys. You know, uh, the truth of the matter is. I would do it. I would do the free things all the time if I felt that our people were responsible enough, you know, to make sure that they value the information. I would just come on free all the time. You know, I just don't know whether our people is that responsible because they value entertainment more than this information and this game that I'm giving you. So many people be saying they they want me to come on here and give everything for free. Nigga didn't co it cost me everything. Which I'll give it to you for free. Nigga cost me prison. It cost me tears. It cost me an anxiety and stress and pressure. Nigga, it cost me something. I'm talking about give it to you for free. The fuck are you talking about? You know, I'm I'm with that. I'm not with that shit. Nigga, value this information. Shit. Okay, hold on. Who somebody would ask me a question? Hold on, hold on. Somebody want me to talk about Joe Langford and the o, o, other players? Um, that'd be a whole another hour or so just to give it any any value. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and it, I couldn't do it. Let me see. Uh, what is the website to hear your classes? Okay, here. Let me go get. Let me go get uh, the YouTube, the YouTube real quick for you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't go nowhere. I might have to switch over, and I'm gonna get my YouTube where you guys can go, click in and 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 join the YouTube class when we have them every week. Uh, where we at? Stay right there. All right, hold on, guys. I'm about to put it in. I'm about to put it in the link right now. Here's the link right here. This is how you join the class, man. Uh, yes. Go. Hold on. Let me see. I know somebody just said something. Let me go try to find it real quick. Yeah. Nobody said I bought the uh, audio book for three hundred. I, I was I was charging three hundred. You value information. I love you for, and I bet it blessed you too. Yeah, I'm dealing with people that are people, our people. This is our time, but we're going to value information more than entertainment. It's okay to have some entertainment. And, and you know, we, we went through so much as a people and, you know, we need some entertainment in our life. I get it, but you can't value it more than knowledge. That's our problem right now. You know, every other race out there value information more than entertainment, but us, you know, and if we is going to conquer, if, if we're going to conquer, you know, it's going to be some information and some knowledge that we're going to have to lift up right now. They lifting up some of their brightest minds. We lift up some of our brightest entertainers. And I'm not mad at none of our entertainers. I'm just saying, you know, until we start valuing this game, which is knowledge, this is all game is, it's knowledge. Right. We'll never be able to produce the kind of minds to compete with our adversaries. You know, uh, let me just say this. Let me say, Jamal, what's up, big bro? I know you cooking. That's soul food that sticks to your ribs. Ain't no question. I'm at work now. Uh, but you... Oh, okay. Okay. I thought you was asking the question, Jamal. Yes, sir. I'm definitely, definitely doing that. Yeah, I just appreciate, you know, people at... That's who I mess with, man. The remnant, man. The remnant, you know? The remnant, you know? People go in there and spend $2,000 for a football ticket. You know, hundreds of dollars for basketball and concerts, or three, four hundred for concerts. And here I am, say, okay, look, man, I got some game to give you, and I got the receipts to point to. I ain't just talking. What nigga that you, what cat out there that doesn't achieve what I achieve in the country right now? We ain't just talking. I got the receipts to point to. And I'm telling you, I'm giving you the information so in your life you can go be a conqueror too. I'm not trying to just make you get along, I'm trying to give you this game so you go out there and be a conqueror like I am. Yeah, this game was able to do some phenomenal things all the way in the lifestyle to politics and against everything that I don't come up against. I don't won with this game. Yeah, real shit. Uh, RS said, I'm looking at starting my own podcast, but I'm nervous. What's your advice? I know that uh, I know that I can give value to people. Can you give me some advice? Yeah, you just got to believe in yourself and go do it. Just go do it. That's all, family. Yeah. If you if you can give some advice, you, you you go do it. You go put it down. You believe in yourself. 
Uh, it's like I used to tell them broads, um, you know, uh, and, and when I was teaching them, right? And I was like, you ain't gonna never be able to attract no big money until you feel something big about yourself, right? And you got to be convincing, right? It's like an actor, right? They got method actors, they got all these type of actors, and you got to be convincing in the role. In the role. I remember I was hearing, I think Burt Reynolds was saying that, what's that actor? I forget his name, but he, he asked, Burt Reynolds asked him for some advice. And he told Burt Reynolds, uh, never be found acting. I think that's powerful. You know, never be found acting. Ah, I forget his name. It keeps slipping by me, man. But uh, in, in other words, what he's saying, be so convincing in the world that in, 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 in the role that people don't know that you're acting. Right. So um, there's something about portraying a, a certain level of confidence that make people believe. Right. If you're selling a product, it's your believability first. They have that little thing and sales says, I'm sold myself. You have to be sold yourself in order to convey whatever you're selling to the other person for them to be sold. But if you are timid, you have trepidation, people could feel that energy for you and they won't be convinced. So my advice for you, as long as you believe in yourself, you will give off that energy to the people that are viewing you. Okay, family. What time is it, man? I've been on here an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, and thank you. And thank you for that uh, $5, RS. I appreciate you. Uh, let me see here. Spud says that's what most don't understand. And that is the game is just not applied to pimping. It's actually vital to almost every day. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, like I explained to people, I've said this before the generation right now think that the game is just pimping, right? They think that's the game. Oh, the game is pimping, right? And some of these older fellas, that's what they feel too, right? But they're limited. They're limited because that's just a small part of the game. I don't pimp. I ain't pimped in over 20 some years, but I've always used this game, right? I've always used this game, but I ain't pimp in over 20 some years, but I use this game every day, right? Because the pimping is just a small part of the game. It's not the totality of the game. It's just a small part. Right? All right. This game does wonders. And I've showed you through police accountability how I use the game to be able to do what nobody's done before. This game did that. All right. All right. All right. A couple more questions and I'm gone, man. You know, get into the classroom. Here, let me give you the link again. Go sign up, man. Get in this classroom, man. Uh, the first of the year... The first of the year, the, well, the, the first, we're, we're giving it once a week now. I wasn't going to start until January the 2nd, but the too many people that subscribe, and I didn't want them to have subscribe and, and, and you know, and not, you know, uh, be able to give them some information. So I had to respect the people that got on, right? So I started uh, early, yesterday, right? So we're going to do it every Thursday until the first of the year. Uh, uh, so after the new year come, we're going to do it twice a week. We're going to have classes twice a week, Mondays and Fridays, twice a week, right? And uh, at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, that's West Coast time, twice a week. You'll be educated. You're going to be empowered. Your whole life is going to be changed. You're going to learn about everything that I've mastered in my life. That's what these classes is about, all right? So you guys, I put the link in there. Like I said, this you guys would have never heard this. But the most high wanted you to hear because there's some people that's looking at that's looking at this thing right now that the most high wanted you to hear this. Right. So that you'll be responsible for the information so that you can say, man, that little 50 bucks is nothing. You'll be spending way more than that on some goddamn tennis shoes. Joe, that's my guy. Thank you, Joe. Love you, man. Love you for that hundred family. Appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate you. Yeah, come on, get in this class, man. You know, you, ain't you tired of being conquered? Ain't you tired of walking around not knowing who you are? Ain't you tired of that? I'm tired of it for you. You know, come get this game. Let Dre empower you, man. Like I said, they got a whole bunch of people out there talking. Talking, man. And they talk good. But ain't nobody got the receipts like your boy Dre. Ain't nobody got the receipts. Everybody got a philosophy out there. And everybody tell you, man, just get this money. You can't serve God in the bag, buddy. You can't serve God in the bag. 
them people, them people got you indoctrinated. This ain't your culture. You ain't operating in your original mind. You operating in the mind of these people that done taught you to be like this. That's why you keep talking about the bag because they got you thinking that that's the most powerful thing. But look at the boys, man, all these rappers and stuff that get into problems and trouble. And what happens to them? They have millions of dollars. And what happens? The same shit happens to them when they ain't got no money because they ain't got no power. Your boy Dre trying to give you some power, trying to give you this game, and it's only knowledge. And I can point to the receipt. Yeah, that's the difference between me and them out there talking because I got the receipts. I got the receipts. You can actually go look up the work that I did with this game. And I come from a pimp and a prostitute out the gutter. And God chose it to be that way so that you can be inspired no matter where you are. The same thing he do for me, he gonna do for you. But you need this game, baby. You need this, you need this knowledge. That's all there is to it. One more time. Let me see. Okay, let me go. Uh, let me go exit out of here real quick. Hi. And let me see. One more question, family. One more question. They print back. Yeah, man. You know, I'm trying to give you guys a game, man. I know, man, that, you know, social media and all these rappers and all these entertainers and shit got your mind, your nose all up in the air. I get it. I get it, man. You know, and God has blessed me. I'm cool. You know, my family's cool. But I, like I said, man, I got receipts, man, because I'm putting God in front of everything. I'm putting this information that he gave me to go through these jungles and to conquer, man, you know? But now, look, man, I'm blessed. I never compromised one time, even when I was facing life in prison. I can I can point you to receipts about relationships, been married 24 years. I can point you to receipts about being a stand-up nigga, was facing life and never bowed down one time, took them people to trial in the most high move for me and got me out of it. I can tell you how to conquer this system when they killed my little brother. I came back to Seattle, Washington and said everybody got to pay and made sure that the law was changed and we lead this country in police accountability, made sure that we won our brother's case for wrongful death lawsuit. Yeah, I'm talking about victories with this information. Yeah, we ain't just talking over here. We got receipts over here. Real shit. You can pay for the class anytime, family. You can play for the class anytime. I just want you to get in because, like I said, remember, until 2023, we're going to have class every Thursday. But when 2023 gets here, Mondays and Fridays, class twice a week. Twice a week. We going in, baby. I got to feed the remnant. Okay? So whenever you feel that this is something you want to do, you come on under, and you come on in there and, and get this blessing. This ain't for everybody. This is for the remnant, man. You know, if you a cat that's satisfied with just being entertained, well, this ain't for you. Keep it pushing. I'm talking to the remnant. Yeah, that's who I'm talking to. Bobby said, do I got a, Acosta said, do I have a reading list? Yeah, I got a reading list. I can tell you, man. I want you guys to go get that Sid Harther. Go get Sid Harther by Herman Hess. Go get that Games People Play by Eric Byrne. Uh, go get that, uh, go get that, excuse me. Go get that Greatest Salesman in the World by Og Mandina. Go get that uh, As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. And you start right there. You can even go get my book, The Road to Paradise. Got game in there, knowledge in there, you know, by Andre Taylor. <laughs> My dad's book, The Mid Man, got game in there. That's who taught me. You know, The Mid Man by Mel Taylor. M I T T M A N, two words. M I T T M A N, The Mid Man. Go get him. Oh, that's my nephew. Thanks, nephew. <laughs> hey, a better path for you. That's nephew, boy. Yeah, I'm going to have to bring him on here because I done taught him, and that boy's sharp as a mother. Yeah. Oh, that's a good, that's a good look with armor and, and Salisbury. That's beautiful, man. Change the law. Yeah. Okay, man. I got to get up out of here, man. I love you guys, man. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. 
on next Thursday, man. Get in class, man. You know, like I said, this is something you would have never heard. I guess the most high wanted you to see some of the shit you'd be missing, right? Because we getting filled up over here. I'm getting the people ready. I'm getting the remnant ready. My responsibility is the remnant. Anybody outside of that, I'm not tripping off of. I don't care if you're blue, black, right? Yeah, if you're part of this remnant, you're my responsibility. I love you guys. I mean it with all my heart. Love. Your boy Dre. I'm out.